word of the Lord says in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 5, verse 1, After this there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Somebody say 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. Verse nine, last verse. And immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Father, we bless you, we praise you, we thank you for this moment in time that you have set aside for us to hear the word that you would speak to these, your people. I pray, Lord, that you would word the mouth, the, the, that you would word my mouth, that you would give me the words to speak, that would penetrate deeply the hearts and minds of these, your people. I pray, Lord, for an unusual move of your spirit, that you would do for them what they cannot do for themselves, that you would do for them what perhaps they came here looking for, that you would mend someone's brokenness, that you would lift up someone's hung down head, that you would give someone hope and peace and joy and anticipation for what you plan to do in their future. I plead the blood of Jesus over this time and space and declare that no weapon formed against this time shall prosper and that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Would you all help me say amen as you take your seats? I'd like to take the next few moments of our time together to talk to your potential. I don't want to talk to your problems this morning. I don't want to talk to your circumstances. I don't want to talk to your issues, but I want to talk to your potential. Potential is important because potential was the seed that was planted in you at your creation. I'm not talking about your conception, but before the foundations of the world, when you were created in the mind of God, you began as potential, what you can be, what you can achieve, what you can do. In fact, everything that is began as potential. Everything that is began as a possibility for when God created the earth, the world, and everything in it, he placed ore in the ground because he knew it had the potential to produce iron and steel. And every time we cook with our cast iron skillets, Every time we use our stainless steel appliances, every time we drive our automobiles, it is a reminder of a seed that has reached its potential. Potential is defined as having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. In other words, potential is capacity before opportunity. 
and God in his omnipotence. God in his omniscience saw fit to plant in each and every one of us seeds of potential. The problem with potential is that we rarely have the ability to recognize the potential we carry within ourselves. This means that our potential is dependent on the people around us. In other words, my potential does not find its way into fulfillment without the people around me identifying and calling out of me what God put inside of me. For every great man and woman of God throughout the history of the faith needed somebody to identify and call out of them what God put inside of them. In the beginning, Adam did not know he had the potential to name a thing that it would one day become, but when God allowed his capacity to meet opportunity, the Bible says that the name he gave them became their name. Furthermore, Adam did not know he carried the potential of Eve inside of him. And while he was looking outside of himself for what God had already put inside of him, God recognizing the potential he put in the man identified and pulled out of the man what he put inside of the man. David, David, who would become the man after God's own heart and arguably the greatest king to rule over the people of Israel, as a young shepherd boy belittled and discounted by his own family, he needed a Samuel to identify and call out of him what God put inside of him. Samuel, Samuel, the young boy who would grow up to become the priest and prophet of Israel was left by his mother in his infancy to be raised by an aging man with his delinquent descendants. I, I know it sounds good when we read it in the Bible, but I can imagine this boy feeling a, a thing such as neglect and abandonment because the mother who carried him and gave birth to him left him. This boy needed an Eli to identify and call out of him what God put inside of him. Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the incarnate son of God living the mundane life of a carpenter's son overlooked and undervalued. He needed a John the Baptist to identify and call out of him what God put inside of him. Even in the world that was void, empty, and without form needed God to identify the potential of nothing and out of nothing call galaxies and planets, seas and land, light and day. And yes, we too, people of God, need people around us who will identify and call out of us what God put in inside of us. I need people who can see my possibility while I'm yet in obscurity. I need people who can recognize that I might not look like much right now, but, but just give me a minute because I've got a glow up anointing. I, I need people around me who can see a future success in the midst of a present failure. I need people who can see a, a future hope in the midst of disappointment. I need people who can see redemption in spite of my broken past people who will not count us out prematurely but who can identify and call out of us what God put 
inside of us. People who will not just speak to what they see, but people who will speak to what has the potential to be. Oh my God, people who can see the contract that hasn't been signed yet. People who can see the career that hasn't developed yet. People who can see the business that hasn't been created yet. I need people who can identify and call out of me what God put inside of me. But as I consider this, people of God, I am baffled by the reality that at times, despite all the people around us, many of us have seeds that have not reached their potential. Is there anybody in here this morning who, who still have dreams that have yet to manifest? Is there anybody in here this morning who, who still have a purpose that, that you are yet to have discovered? Is, is there anybody in here who, who still has a vision that you've yet to realize? I, my God, how can I be surrounded by so many people and still have seeds of potential that have not reached their capacity? When we come to our text this morning, we are confronted with a man who is surrounded by three types of people. Somebody say three types of people. The Bible captures them in the broad term sick and then specifies them as the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. And they are sitting on porches around a pool waiting for the water to be stirred that they might be healed. If I can park here parenthetically for just a moment, many scholars believe this may have been a story or a fable that was passed down from generation to generation, which would suggest the possibility that these individuals were waiting on a fantasy. In other words, it is possible that this multitude of people may have been waiting for something that was never going to happen. Oh my God, is it possible that their desperation caused them to wait on a potential that was really a fantasy? Oh, I wish I had some help in here. See, you've got to be careful, people of God, when you're desperate because desperation will cause you to believe in a fantasy. Desperation will cause you to marry potential that was never there. Desperation will cause you to open businesses prematurely. In other words, desperation will cause you to waste your time. I, I've wasted wasted enough time in years past. In 2019, I don't have time to waste any more time praying over fantasies, believing over fantasies, hoping over fantasies, building and planning on fantasies. Oh, would you do me a favor? Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, are you waiting on a fantasy or a promise? Oh, come on, I dare you to look at your other neighbor and ask that neighbor, are you waiting on a fantasy or a promise? Oh, yeah, I know that man look real good, but are you waiting on a fantasy or a promise? I, I know that job description looks like it fits you, but are you waiting on a fantasy or a promise? If you're waiting on a fantasy, oh, my God, it doesn't matter if you name it and claim it. If you're waiting on a fantasy, it doesn't matter if you run around the building. If you're waiting on a fantasy, it doesn't matter if you see it before you see it. Because a fantasy is a fantasy is a fantasy. But if you're waiting on a promise, oh, my God. 
years. And the Bible says he was surrounded by the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. The first type of those who were around the pool were those who were blind. Those who had no ability to perceive what was in front of them. There are two forms of blindness. There is complete blindness and there is partial blindness. Complete blindness suggests that you are completely without sight. Partial blindness suggests that you have limited vision, meaning in some instances you can see and in other instances you cannot see. Partial blindness can also mean that when you do see, you are unable to see clearly. The next group of people that were around the pool was the lame and the paralyzed. Give me a minute to work the text. I'm lumping them together because they both have to do with mobility. People who are lame are people who cannot walk normally or people who are feeble. People who are paralyzed are people who in part or in whole lack the ability to move. In other words, this man who had been sitting on a porch around a pool for 38 years is surrounded by people with inconsistent vision and people with an inability to move from one place to the next. We've been in a series talking about moving towards difficult people but these are not difficult people these are disabled people oh I'm sorry that might have been politically incorrect so let me say it another way these people are not difficult people but these people are people who could not help him even if they wanted to And when Jesus asked this man, do you want to be made well? He blames the people for his lack of progress. But when you look at the people, it is clear that these people could not help him if they wanted to. I don't have time to deal with this like I want to. But is it possible, people of God, that the people you thought were unwilling to help you were really unable to help you? Is it possible, people of God, that you've mixed up their willingness with their ability and you've labeled people haters who weren't haters. You've cut off relationships. You've ended associations when they couldn't open the doors for themselves that you were asking them to open for you. You mad at your boss now because he wouldn't open up a door of opportunity when you fail to realize that he can't open up that door for himself. They can't get themselves to the pool. How you expect them to get you to the pool? How can you ask the sick to help you get well? See, some of you know what I'm talking about because you were the sick who were expected to do for others what you couldn't even do for yourself. You were the sick who were expected to show up and pick up the phone when you could barely get out of bed and people labeled you a hater. People labeled you lazy. People labeled you stingy. People talked about you and broke ties with you without noticing the fact that you were barely holding on to your family. You were barely holding on to your marriage. You were barely holding on to your business. And if you could have helped them, you would have helped them. But there are times when my sickness is so debilitating. 
And he has the audacity to blame them for his lack of progress. Oh, my God. I'm realizing, people of God, that I cannot continue blaming the people around me for not seeing in me what God put inside of me because perhaps they can't see. Oh, I'm learning, people of God, that if I take a moment to look outside of myself, just for a moment, perhaps I'd realize that the people I've been expecting to help me are sick. This puts me in a bind because I know I'm called to bear the infirmities of the weak, but I'm also weak. This puts me in a bind because I know I'm supposed to be there for my brothers and my sisters, but, but right now I need somebody to be there for me. Is, is there anybody in here who understands that tension? Is it possible that you've been looking for help in the wrong people and it set up disappointment inside of you? You took it personally. You thought they were against you. You thought they were attacking you. You thought they were setting up walls and barriers to prevent you from going into what you believe God was calling you into. But I came to tell you that it wasn't personal. It wasn't against you. Because perhaps these people, those people that those people that you've questioned, those people that you told yourself, oh, I can't trust them. Perhaps those people were sick too. I got to hang here for a bit because this man was so focused on what people didn't do for him that he failed to recognize what people were trying to do in his present. He was so caught up in what happened in his past that, that he couldn't see that there was somebody standing in front of him that wasn't asking about his history, but was asking about his destiny. And he almost missed a moment because here is the King of glory. Here is the Lord God Almighty, the Lord mighty in battle, standing before him, asking him, do you want to be well? starts talking about what happened. I love this. Because when you study this out, Jesus is speaking to a man who the text calls sick, but he says he can't walk. The Bible calls him sick, but this man says he can't walk. And I really started thinking about this. I, I started thinking about what could have happened in his life to make a sick man believe he can't walk. What could have happened in his life to make, to make a sick man believe he was lame? The, the text does not call him lame. The, the text calls him sick. And yet when he's face to face with his deliverer, he talks about an issue with his mobility. And I love this. I love this, people of God. Because there are times when you can hang around a situation for so long that you believe that it's actually in you. There are times when you can be complacent for so long that you cease to believe that there is potential and purpose ahead of you. There are times when you can be around the sick for so long that you can, that you can believe that you're sick just like them. But this man didn't have a physical condition. This man had a mental condition. This man was not immobile in his legs. He was immobile in his thoughts. And I came to ask you this morning, what are you thinking about? What do you believe about yourself? Because you may not always have somebody around you to identify and call out of you what God put inside of you. But what do you tell yourself? When you look in the mirror, what do you tell yourself? When people ask you about who you want to be and where you want to go, how do you respond about yourself? This man, I've been 
sitting around this pool for 38 years. 38 years sitting by the pool of Bethesda begging for change. And this man all along had what it took to get himself to his healing. Cut off from family and friends, lacking purpose and direction, this man all along had the ability to get up and walk. 38 years is a long time to sit around waiting for somebody to do for you what you can do for yourself. 38 years is a long time for you to talk about what happened in your past without thinking about what you want to see in your future. How long are you going to sit there watching other people get delivered? How long are you going to sit there watching other people become great? How long are you going to sit there talking about your dreams without achieving your dreams? How long are you going to allow days to become weeks and weeks to become months and months to become years? How long are you going to keep crying about what happened in your past? How long are you going to believe the lie? of people who were never called to speak into your life. How long? All over this building, can we stand and just lift up your hands? I want you to make the decision today that you will not allow another year to go past still talking about the things you were talking about last year. But this is the year of manifestation. This is the year of walking in everything God called you to walk in. This is the year where dreams will become reality and purpose will be realized. And I'm not telling you a cloud in the sky type of story. Because the reality is God has empowered each and every one of us to produce something in the earth that nobody else can produce but us. So all over this building, if you would lift up your hands and just begin talking to your father. 